everybody, Chris here with another How to Print video. Today I'll be showing you how to make a lino cut print using basic tools and materials. For this, you'll need a pencil drawing of what you want to print, your linoleum or eraser-like material, or even an eraser, ink and a roller, your carving tools, either kind is fine for this and available at art stores or even dollar stores. And of course, like all my tutorials, patience. Patience to learn the materials, and most importantly, patience with yourself. I'm still working on that. The idea is that we're making a stamp. We carve out the parts we do not want the ink to go. And printmakers use lots of different techniques and materials to do that. Whether it's linoleum or easy cut, MDF board, house insulation foam, Japanese mokuhanga, or just simply cutting into some plywood. Hey, don't forget to like, smash subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications on the next video. Yeah, all the best. Anyway, using the carving tool properly is really important, not only so you can carve smoothly, but also so you don't accidentally do a test print with your blood. I'm always pushing the tool away from myself, at a shallow angle, and never towards my hand. But it's natural, you want to keep the block stable. To change the blade on the carving tool, just unscrew the metal part, pull out the piece carefully, and fit the new one in the space made for it and tighten. B A R K Bark! Bark 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 bark! The important part of block printing, as opposed to screen printing, is that we carve all our artwork backwards, like in a mirror. So if I wanted to print our little friend here saying bark, we need to write it backwards, like this. Here, let me show you. Let's cover up this bark real quick. Get our stamp pad out. Okay, regular bark. Backwards! Backwards? Backwards bark. Mm-hmm. So keep this in mind when you're making your sketch, and especially if you plan to have words. Now a cool and easy way to transfer your drawing already mirrored onto the linoleum without even having to think about what I just explained by simply rubbing the back of your drawing to push the carbon from the drawing itself onto the linoleum. Now yeah, let me show you. Okay, let's get this onto a mat. Nice, let's carve. For me, when I'm starting, I like to carve the parts I know are going to be white if that's the paper color you're printing on. My plan for this is just a simple black print on white paper, but you could just as easily change the paper or ink color, roll out multiple colors, or have multiple blocks for additional colors. I also carve the sections I feel most confident about, but it's also good to carve a little part, even a line, everywhere just to get a feel for it and break the ice. Good technique there! I'm using my other hand low down on the tool to give me a little bit more control for details. Plus I don't have to worry about cutting myself. Sometimes with Lino Cut we need to carve out more parts or dirty edges after we print it for the first time. These are called test prints, and it's totally normal to go back and forth between carving and printing. There's even a process called reductive printing that uses just that to print a new color every time you cut something away. Carving is definitely a skill one needs to practice, but you'll get there if you stick to it. And done. Let's print. You can see I've created a tape guide so I know exactly where to put the block. I've also made two lines to know where I should put my paper. Doing it this way is good for when you ink your block away from where you print. So no matter what, your block will print in the same place on the paper over and over again. This is called registration, 
And good registration is how we can print multiple blocks on multiple pieces of paper and have them go in the same place. So we have our ink or paint. Today I'm going to use this old black ink that uh, apparently belongs to my friend Malcolm. Uh, thanks, dude. Okay, I'm going to put a thin bead of ink there. Grab my roller and roll it out. And I always lift the roller and start again as opposed to rolling it back and forth. You know your ink is the perfect consistency to roll it on when it sounds like soft Velcro. So let's slap it on there. Carefully. I'm rolling it on in the two directions just to make sure I get all the parts I want covered in ink and to spread out evenly. If the roller sounds like soft Velcro on the block, like on the ink pad, you've hit the sweet spot. So using our registration, we can lay a slice of paper down and gently start pushing it down. If you move your hand too fast, it may shift the paper and mess with your print. But you want to push down with good pressure to get the ink to transfer. If you have a Baron, this is what it's used for, but we're keeping it real and DIY. Today. So there's that dog. Looking pretty good if I say so myself. He's just saying, what's up? Loudly. Okay, let's print another one. Another thing you'll notice is that your prints will get better as you print them. So you can see from the first to the second print, it's getting a bit darker. Now let's try something different. Let's print on some fabric and see what happens. It would be cool to have a barking dog patch on my backpack. Let the people know what I'm all about. Sick. Okay, let's print one more together. Nice. Best one yet. What makes this kind of printmaking special from all the other forms of art is that we can make lots of copies and versions of our artwork and even reprint it later. We can give them away as gifts or sell them. We can share a message to lots of people or make something just for ourselves. And with that, I hope this video was helpful and I'm so happy I could spend a little time with you today making some art.